Yay, finally going. One hour, 20 minutes late. I'm starting to worry a little bit about... Thank you. Perfect. It was lovely. Thank you so much. Nice to be back. You know, last time I was here at Schiphol in Amsterdam, May 2020, the place was deserted. It was like an absolute ghost town. There were no passengers and only a handful of flights a day. Um, and now would you look at it? Things are getting busier again. The world is opening one border at a time. And today it's the turn of Canada because about two hours ago, Canada opened their borders to vaccinated travelers from all around the world. So guess where we're heading today? Now, the flight I'm on today is one of the first ever flights from Europe to Canada after the borders have opened. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen and how it's all going to go. I'm expecting confusion and I'm expecting chaos, but um, hey, what would this channel be without a little bit of chaos, eh? <laughs> Good morning, hi. Do you need to see my ticket or something or? Uh, are you Skype or your business class? Uh, business class, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. All right, Welcome. thank you, thank you. Uh, you need to find a Just find us yeah, the shortest queue. <laughs> thank you. Hello, good morning. Check in, in please, for Toronto. And I think I have everything you need, so. <laughs> Unless it's changed in the last 10 minutes as it tends to do, so yeah. <laughs> I do, yes. So that's, that's from yesterday. And I've got my vaccine pass as well, if you need that. You're gonna, it's going to be another check at the gate. Okay, yeah. And then we'll check Right, okay, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Boarding starts on 8.50. Yep. But first go to F2. That's an uh, extra check for your documents. Okay, check F2, yeah. And F2, they're going to tell you the departing gate. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Passport. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Right, all checked in. Um, and apparently we're boarding in 10 minutes. We're like two hours before the flight, but they're boarding already because um, obviously they have to go through all the new checks and everything for entering Canada. So we've got to go and do that now. That's a different gate and then figure out where we're going from there. So who knows? Right, through security, through passport control. Interestingly, this is the first time I've transited through a European airport since Britain left the EU um, earlier on this year. And I've got a stamp in my passport both ways in last night and out this morning. The whole process really has been pretty seamless. There's not really been any difference to before. You just go through a slightly different lane at the passport control for non-EU and it, there's never anybody there. So actually it was probably quicker this morning going through that lane than it was the other one. But anyway, never mind. Um, I need to head to my gate, which is, I've no idea where it is. Schiphol such a big airport. It's the F pier, but let's see if we can figure out where we need to go. That's good. Oh, heavens above, look at the queue for this gate. Oh. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi. You're a scribe for your I am, yeah. Uh, did you download to your iPhone? I do, I have it on my phone, do you need to see it? Yes. There we go. Uh, you may come forward then. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Is this just Canada flights here? Yes. Wow. Now we do. Now it's all Canada. open for everybody, I guess. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Right. So what do you need first? Okay. So that's there. My. Thank you very much. Cheers, have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, that turned out to be pretty straightforward, actually. Um, so you basically now, for the Canada flights, because they're opening the borders like today and everybody can now get in, they've got an entire setup for Canadian flights to get through um, and get all their documents checked. So you all line up and they basically go through the Arrive Can app that you've got to do and all the PCR tests, vaccines, cards and all the rest of it. And then you get a nice little sticker. So PCR check complete. So now, off to the lounge. Oh, 
coffee time. Um, almost forgot actually um, to tell you guys, but today we're riding on a KLM Boeing 787-10 Dreamliner. Um, not been on one of their 78. In fact, I've never flown long haul with KLM actually, come to think of it, uh, which is strange because they're only like our next door airline pretty much to the UK and it's um, almost like our second airline I call them sometimes because they fly to all the regional airlines that even BA don't or the regional airports rather that even BA don't fly to so um, yeah it's cool to be flying them long haul and I'm looking forward to getting on this 787-10 it's going to be pretty cool um, ride up in business class at the front can't wait to see what KLM have to offer Right, it's still an hour until the flight leaves, but I'm going to head to the gate anyway because I don't know what it's going to be like um, in terms of getting on board for this um, long haul flight across to Toronto. So let's head to gate F7, I think they said. <sighs> KLM, off to Toronto. So this is the line for the document check that I did earlier on now. It now goes the entire length of the F pier here at Schiphol from right at the bottom end right down to this end here. It's absolutely crazy. Now, fortunately, I got to skip most of it because in business class, there you'd be sky priority, which gives you access to like cutting lines and stuff like that, which is really cool. But if you're in economy, I wouldn't fancy standing in that line. That's going to take you at least a couple of hours to get through. You need to bear that in mind if you're heading to Canada anytime soon. Uh, from here at Amsterdam, at least I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but it's a massive line. Um, I'm heading down to the gate now. I'm glad I got all that out of the way earlier, to be honest. Um, I fancy standing in that lot, but um, let's get to the gate. So right just there, the KLM 787-10 is going to take us over to Toronto in Canada today. Such a cool plane, I love the Dreamliner and um, I love the Dash 10, I've only been on one before with Etihad um, so it's always nice to go and ride on a Dash 10, they're not very common compared to the 8s and 9s. Um, about an 8 or 9 hour flight across to Toronto today I think, we're going to be getting on board this one very soon and getting on our way. That's annoying. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Right, let's go to Toronto. Hello, good morning. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome aboard the KLM Boeing 787-10 business class. Today we're heading to Toronto in Canada and this is a really comfortable seat actually it's the it seems like it's a sort of super diamond seat or something but it's got kind of slightly different controls um, there's these really cool sort of touch things here um, which are pretty cool nice big TV screen up here we've got some storage sort of over here bottle of water what else we got headphones power and everything down here an amenity kit Jantamin the Jantaminio, Jantaminio, or something, I don't know. Uh, we'll go through that in a little while. Um, kill him, kill him. Um, plenty of room as well, put your feet out. And of course, there's a full flat bed as well. Um, Oh, but the front here, very nice indeed. I've never flown KLM long haul before. I've flown on them short haul loads connecting through Europe, but never actually done long haul. So it's actually going to be really cool to see what they're like here in business class. It's one I've been meaning to try for the longest time. Um, so it's good to be on board, and especially on this aircraft, this 787 Dreamliner Dash 10. You cannot beat that view, can you? It's just incredible. Getting on our way pretty soon, and in the skies heading to Canada. Good 
Uh, we're now like half an hour after our scheduled departure time um, and still no sign of us going anywhere. I was just going to watch some TV but look at this, um, look at this, the headset um, that you get. So it's a noise cancelling headset. I was like, how does that work? This is the connector but watch this, this is so cool. That's where it lives. Like that, look, watch. All magnetic. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> right, so it seems that the reason for the delay is because of all of those checks, all those document checks they were doing. Um, no surprise there, really. Uh, I think we're just waiting for another six passengers now. We're about 45 minutes after departure time, I'm waiting for about another six passengers, they've just said. So we should be getting going pretty soon. Uh, hopefully, we'll make up some of that time on the way as well. Um, dread to think what it's going to be like at the other end, though. <laughs> Finally going, one hour, 20 minutes late, we're pushing back. Our route today then took us out of Amsterdam, crossing the UK and Ireland before coasting out into the Atlantic Ocean. We crossed the southern tip of Greenland before coasting in over Quebec and dropping down into Toronto. Flight time today was 7 hours and 7 minutes, cruising at 34 and 37,000 feet. So then airborne finally from Amsterdam on our way to Toronto, Canada over the North Sea at the moment. Um, look, yeah, I'm still looking forward to this flight. It's delayed massively, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. I think, it, I guess, really, it's because of all those extra checks that they had to do. Loads of passengers had got to the gate and not realised that they had to go and do all of that, so they had to go and join that line literally at boarding time, so that's why we were waiting for those. But um, I'm sure it will get easier as things move on and everybody sort of learns what they have to do. Now part of the reason I don't often think about taking KLM for flights is because their flights literally take us, if you're going to, um, to America or Canada from Amsterdam, right back over our house. You see we're flying them out over northern England now. We um, see the KLM flights in and out of Amsterdam all day, every day, flying over our house and now I'm actually on board one of them for once. Um, we're about to coast in over Hull actually, um, which I can see just down there. There's Spurnhead down there in East Yorkshire. Some of the beaches that we like down there in that part of the world as well. So, um, yeah, it's <laughs> so cool to be flying over home on our way to the States. Or not to the States, to Canada. I need to get my countries right. So we just left um, England behind. We flew from Hull across Leeds and over, just coasted out over Morecambe Bay towards the Isle of Man now. So pretty cool, like no more than five or 10 minutes and we've crossed the entire of England uh, from the east coast to west. Cool, so cool. Well, I can see Scotland up there as well, very pretty. So there we go then, saying bye-bye to Europe. 
as we fly over Donegal in Ireland and make our journey out into the North Atlantic. The table's set for dinner, or for lunch rather, and I've chosen the fish for the starter and there's like a lasagna, a veal lasagna for my main course. I have to say so far the crew on this flight are just absolutely incredible. Um, KLM have always impressed me in the past with their crew and the service on board. So I don't know whether, why I thought that the um, long haul service might have been any different, but I always just didn't really think of using KLM to go anywhere. I'll be honest, I'll be using them a lot more because their um, service on this flight has just been absolutely astounding so far um, as we make our way across the Atlantic. Looking forward to getting some food inside me because I'm starving, I've not eaten today yet. So the food has arrived, starter at least, and we've got fish today um, for the starter with a bit of a salad and everything else, like bread and stuff, and a nice glass of wine. This Savignon Blanc is really nice, actually. I'm very impressed with that. Oh, so let's try this fish. That is really nice, really delicious as well. So the main course has arrived. It's veal lasagna. That's what I went for today. Looks quite nice. Let's give it a go. That is absolutely delicious. Oh, and also, look at the little clogs that the salt and pepper come in. Look at that, look. So it is that time of the flight that I like to call amenity kit time, mainly because I'm not very original and not very creative, but um, we're going to go through the amenity kit. And what an amenity kit it is on the KLM 787, it's a Jamtaminio amenity kit. Instructions say, pull here to open, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's not opened it at all, brilliant. Oh, hang on, it has. There we go. Oh, exciting times as we open the Janti Janti Amenity Kit, whatever it's called. Um, oh, look, lovely stripy socks. Hey, they're fancy, aren't they? They're very smart. Uh, what else do we have? We have an eye mask and a nice eye mask as well. It's not branded. It's a bit of a shame. Um... Face moisturiser for moisturising your face. Um, earbuds and a KLM sort of packet. We have a toothbrush. We have a ooh, little baby KLM pen. Look how cute that pen is, look. <laughs> um, and we have a lip balm. Toothpaste. Yeah, if I'm honest, a little bit underwhelming. Um, but again, who uses them in the kits? Well, although I do. I mean, I'm, my drawers at home are full of them, but this will be a nice addition to the drawers full of amenity kits that we've got at home. Um, so there you go, that's what you get in a KLM Jantam. Jan, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, a KLM amenity kit. You may remember a couple of weeks ago I asked if you still wanted to see my Lou reviews. Literally handfuls of you responded and I soon had my answer. So without further ado, it's time for the Noel Phillips Lou Review. It's Lou Review time here on the KLM Dreamliner and um, we have a tulip. Very nice KLM bathroom. Get some pieces down here. Oh, I like the wallpaper. Look at this wallpaper behind me. Look. Very fancy. Very fancy. There's no window though, which is a bit annoying. Um, a lot of Dreamliners have the windows, but this one, this is the front one, but there isn't, there isn't a back one in business class, so I don't really understand why. Um, but it's a nice. Not a bad bathroom, to be honest. Um, a bit pokey is the only issue. Um, but yeah, if you've got the ones at the back of the business class cabin going, then it would probably have been a bit bigger because they usually 
are and usually in the window and stuff, but here at the front, obviously the aircraft sort of squeezes in and um, we're left with this, unfortunately. Well, it's not bad. Tulips from Amsterdam. Um, like Dutch houses on the wall and um, it's quite nice, it's quite pleasant. That was the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Right, so the flatbed on the KLM Dreamliner, it's pretty comfy. I'm sort of laid flat out. These pillars are really nice, by the way, as well. It's nice to get an actual fluffy pillow on um, a business class flight. Plenty of room for me to lay down. I can see me getting a good couple of hours rest on here. Um, obviously, it's a middle of the day flight, but I've been up since crazy o'clock this morning, fretting over everything that we'd have to do up in um, Amsterdam. So. I'm going to try and get my head down for a little bit as we sort of cruise across the Atlantic Ocean, the boring blue bit in the middle, um, and hopefully we're not long off arriving into Canadian airspace and seeing some beautiful scenery below if the weather's not too bad. Fingers crossed. Um, I just woke up from a bit of a nap actually, I had about an hour or so just resting, um, looked out the window and what should I see but <laughs> an Emirates 777 right outside the window. That is cool. So time for a snack, um, about an hour and a half now until we land and there was a choice basically of a burger or this chicken empanada but the burger was a like, vegetarian burger and I didn't really fancy the plant burger. Um, I've gone for the chicken empanada which looks a little bit bland, it looks like a bit like a Cornish pasty but I'm expecting it not to taste like a Cornish pasty. Greg's spicy Mexican pasty. And I'm not complaining about Greg's. It's amazing they can bring me another one of these in a minute. I have heard about these before and I've always wanted to get one and now I've flown KLM and I have got one. These are like little porcelain Delft blue houses that they give out to business class passengers on every KLM long haul flight. And it's actually like, a, you can collect them, there's loads of different ones and you can build like a little street scene out of them on your shelf at home. This one's number 14. Um, and inside it, it contains like a local gin or something, like a Dutch gin. Um, which is very exciting for me. But the fact they give these little things out on every flight is so cool, isn't it? And if that isn't a reason to want to fly KLM more often, then I don't know what is. <sighs> so started our descent down into Toronto Airport. We'll be on the ground in about 10 minutes now. I'm um, starting to worry a little bit about this connection I've got. It was a four hour connection. It's now a three hour connection with this delay. And it's the first day that Canada of borders have been open to the rest of the world if you're fully vaccinated. So I've read reports of three hours plus being um, spouted about for getting through passport control and doing all the health checks when you land into Toronto. So I am keeping my fingers tightly crossed that we might be able to make this connection. I mean, a three hour, three hour connection normally you think is no trouble, but in the environment we're in at the moment, who knows if we're gonna make it. So we'll figure out when we get down there just how bad the passport lines are at um, Toronto. But in the meantime, we are ooh, just descending through 7,000 feet.
soon as it passes you by the signage switch stop, that passengers on the first row may collect their belongings in the luggage bins. My flight to Toronto cost me just over £2,100, working out at a price of 58 pence per mile. Now this was incredibly pricey for a transatlantic flight, but it's worth pointing out that I did book it just a couple of days out after my original flight with Royal Air Maroc was cancelled due to the Canadians banning flights from Morocco. Thank you, Thank you very much, goodbye. Thank you, you too. So I'd landed in Canada. Now it was just time to see just how bad those passport queues at immigration would be and, crucially, whether I'd make my connecting flight. There was nothing left to do but join the queue and check my watch. And after just 25 minutes, I was through immigration and officially in Canada. What a result. I made it into Toronto, yay! And it's great to be back here in Canada, so cool. Uh, literally one of the very first flights to arrive back into Canada after the whole um, entrance ban was lifted this morning to vaccinated people and we're here ready to explore what Canada has in store for the next couple of weeks. Um, and yet we're in Canada, yay! Um, and who knows what excitement and fun and games is going to await us over the next sort of couple of weeks when, well, obviously I know because um, I've booked it all, but you don't know and the only way you're going to find out is to subscribe to find that out. So hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss anything from this amazing next couple of weeks I've got here in Canada. In the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.